Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. This week, we're headed back to North America for, well, it's two stories over three days from Rutabaga Pigeons by Carl Sandberg. I mean, that's kind of fortunate for us, right? We usually read a story a day, which means three. Over last week, we only had two, but that's because the second was rather long and I wanted to break it up. This one is even annotated as two stories about four boys who had different dreams. And although it's not long or terribly complicated, Sandberg has split the first into two. This is How Googler and Gaggler, the Two Christmas Babies, Came Home with Monkey Wrenches, Part 1. Two babies came home one night in snowstorm weather, came to a tar paper shack on a cinder patch next to the railroad yards on the edge of the village of liver and onions. The family doctor came that night, came with the bird of a spiz car throwing a big spotlight of a headlight through the snow of the snowstorm on the prairie. Twins, said the doctor. Twins, said the father and mother. And the wind as it shook the tar paper shack and shook the doors and the padlocks on the doors of the tar paper shack, the wind seemed to be howling softly. Twins, twins. Six days and Christmas Eve came. The mother of the twins lit two candles, two little two for a nickel candles in each little window. And the mother handed the father the twins and said, Here are your Christmas presents. The father took the two baby boys and laughed. Twice times twice is twice. The two little two for a nickel candles sputtered in each little window that Christmas Eve, and at last sputtered and went out, leaving the prairies dark and lonesome. The father and the mother of the twins sat by the window, each one holding a baby. Every once in a while they changed babies so as to hold a different twin, and every time they changed they laughed at each other. Twice times twice is twice. One baby was called Googler, the other Gaggler. The two boys grew up and hair came on their bald red heads. Their ears, wet behind, got dry. They learned how to pull on their stockings and shoes and tie their shoestrings. They learned at last how to take a handkerchief and hold it open and blow their noses. Their father looked at them growing up and said, I think you'll make a couple of peanut wagon men pouring hot butter into popcorn sacks. The family doctor saw the rashes and the itches and the measles and the whooping cough come along one year and another. He saw the husky googler and the husky gaggler throw off the rashes and the itches and the measles and the whooping cough. And the family doctor said, They will go far and see much, and they will never be any good for sitting with the sitters and knitting with the knitters. Googler and gaggler grew up and turned handsprings going to school in short pants whistling with school books under their arms. They went barefooted and got stickers in their hair and teased cats and killed snakes and climbed apple trees and threw clubs up walnut trees and chewed slippery alum. They stubbed their toes and cut their feet on broken bottles and went swimming in brickyard ponds and came home with their backs sunburnt so the skin peeled off. And before they went to bed every night they stood on their heads and turned flip-flops. One morning early in spring the young frogs were shooting silver spears of little new songs up into the sky. Strips of fresh young grass were beginning to flick the hills and spot the prairie with flicks and spots of new green. On that morning, Googler and Gaggler went to school with fun and danger and dreams in their eyes. They came home that day and told their mother, There's a war between the pen wipers and the pencil sharpeners. Millions of pen wipers and millions of pencil sharpeners are marching against each other, marching and singing, Hey, foot, straw, foot, belly full of bean soup. The pen wipers and the pencil sharpeners, millions and millions are marching with drums, drumming, Tarum, 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 rum, rum. The pen wipers say, no matter how many million ink spots it costs, and no matter how many million pencil sharpeners we kill, we're going to kill and kill till the last of the pencil sharpeners is killed. The pencil sharpeners say, no matter how many million shavings it costs, no matter how many million pen wipers we kill, we're going to kill and kill till the last of the pen wipers is killed. The mother of Googler and Gaggler listened, her hands folded, her thumbs under her chin, her eyes watching the fun and the danger and the dreams in the eyes of the two boys. And she said, Me, oh my, but those pen wipers and pencil sharpeners hate each other. And she turned her eyes toward the flicks and spots of new green grass coming on the hills in the prairie, and she let her ears listen to the young frog shooting silver spears of little songs up into the sky that day. And she told her two boys, Pick up your feet now and run. Go to the grass, 
Go to the new green grass. Go to the young frogs and ask them why they're shooting songs up in the sky this early spring day. Pick up your feet now and run. And that is part one of how Googler and Gaggler, the two Christmas babies, came home with monkey wrenches. And we don't know why they came home with monkey wrenches yet, but we do know a little bit about them. The twins, the Christmas babies, Googler and Gaggler. This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com. We'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much listening.